Hi, everyone. I'm John Tarilla, one of the authors of Topology, a Categorical Approach. I'd like to talk about filters and ultrafilters in topology. But before I do, I'm going to begin with a little motivation in which I try to give you a perspective where you can think of filters and ultrafilters as kinds of generalizations of points in spaces. So the first thing I want to say is that uh, you should think of a point in a space X as a map from the one point space into X. Now, like any function, uh, say F from a set A to a set B, you have uh, you can pull back sets in B to get subsets of A. So you get a function from the set, the power set of B to the power set of A. So if you do this uh, for a point viewed as a function from the one point space into X, uh, you can view a point as a function from the power set of X into the power set of the, of the one point set, which uh, can, has two points in it, the empty set and the set consisting of the one point. And let me just rename those. Let's rename the empty set zero and the set that contains the one point one. So I want to think of a point as a function from the power set to, of x to 0, 1. Now, uh, not all functions from the power set of x into 0, 1 arise in the way that I just described from points. So we can think, so this gives us a way to generalize the concept of points as some more general kind of function from the power set of x into 0, 1. Now, there's a hierarchy of kinds of functions from 2 to the x into 0, 1, that on one hand, the most restricted kind look like points in x, and on the other extreme are arbitrary functions from 2 to the x into 0, 1. Now, let me mention a few ways in between. So if you remember 2 to the x is a set of sets and 0, 1 is a set of sets, um, we can ask that a function respects intersection. Such a function is called a meet semi-lattice map. Um, we can also ask that it respect intersection and respect union. Uh, such a map is called a Boolean algebra homomorphism. Now, there's another set of terminology that's used. The meet semi-lattice maps are also called filters, and the Boolean algebra maps are known as ultrafilters. In order to break this down a little further, just remember that there's a correspondence between um, functions into 0, 1 and subsets of the domain. Namely, a, you can take a subset of the domain and make a function out of it by sending everything in that set to 1 and everything in the complement of that set to 0. Or it, likewise, if I have a function, I can define a subset of the domain as the preimage of 1. So if I have a function, call it little f, from the power set of x into 0, 1, I can create a set of subsets of x, call it script f, uh, by defining script f to consist of all of those sets that little f maps to 1. And then what is this collection of sets in the case, for example, that you're looking at a point, little x, in your space? Well, you view uh, little x as a as a map from the one point set into your space. And then you look at the collection of all subsets whose pre-image includes that point. That's exactly just the subsets of X, the subsets of your space that contain the point little x. And that makes sense. What else could it be? I give you a point in my space and I have to find a collection of subsets. It's just the collection of sets that contain that point. Now, at the other extreme of the hierarchy, if you have an arbitrary function from 2 to the x into 0, 1, you can get an arbitrary subset of 2 to the x as this collection script f. Uh, namely, you just, given, an arb given any collection of sets, subsets of x, define a function that sends those sets to 1 and, and every other set to 0. OK, now let's look at what this collection of sets script f looks like in if we restrict our function little f to respect intersections. Remember, uh, 0, 1, 0 is the empty set, and 1 is the one-point set. So here, intersection is just multiplication. So 
uh, if f respects intersection, it means that f has to send uh, a intersect b to the f of a times f of b. So that's a restriction on, on f. And um, with, with the binary operation of intersection, we have the entire set as a unit for intersection. So we'll ask that f respect uh, um, will respect the units and send the whole set x to the value 1. So um, what does this mean for the subsets of x that get sent to 1? Well, uh, as we said, it's, it respects intersection. So if a is in this set script f and b is in script f, their intersection is in script f. Because f respects units, it sends x to 1, so x itself is in the collection, and so this collection of sets script f isn't empty. And it's also upward closed, meaning that if a is in f and a is contained in b, then b must be in this collection f. And that's just because a equals a intersect b, so f of a has to equal f of a times f of b. So if f of a is 1, f of b must be 1. And conversely, if you, namely, if you have a collection of sets that is downward directed, meaning it's closed under intersection, it's a non-empty collection, and it's, it's upward closed, then it corresponds to a meat lattice homomorphism from the power set of x into 0, 1. We have terminology for such a collection of sets, um, and, and my notation script f was suggestive. Uh, a collection of sets satisfying these three properties is called a filter. Now, if this uh, function little f respects intersection and the units for intersection, um, and in addition respects union, and the units for union, then it's called a Boolean algebra map. And what implications does this have for the collection script F? Well, let me begin by saying if it respects uh, the units for union, it means it sends the empty set to zero. So that means that uh, the set collection script F is a proper subset of the power set of X. It doesn't contain everything. And now let A be an arbitrary set. Since the entire set X equals A union A complement, and X evaluates to 1, and F respects unions, then uh, we know that A has to go to 1, or A complement has to go to 1, meaning either A or A complement is in F. Um, moreover, since A intersect A complement is the empty set and the empty set gets sent to zero and uh, this map respects intersections, it means that uh, you must have exactly one of A or A complement in F. And this is, these are the only additional conditions required on the collection of sets F for the collection of sets F to correspond to a Boolean algebra map. And this leads directly to the following definition. A filter F that is um, proper and has the property that for any set A, either A or A complement is in F, is called an ultra filter. Now let's look at a simple example. Consider X uh, a three point set, A, B, C and define the following function um, on subsets of x to 0, 1. Let's send the set that contains a and b to 1 and, and the set that contains a, b, and c to 1 and every other set to 0. And so the collection script f in this case consists of two sets, uh, the set that contains a, b, and the set that contains a, b, c. This is a filter, but it's not an ultra filter. To see that, let's call the map f, and just notice that f of a union b is 1, but that doesn't equal f of a plus f of b, which is 0 plus 0. Now, 
it turns out that all ultra filters on finite sets, uh, or even more generally, any ultra filter that contains a finite set, uh, must be principal, meaning it must be of the form that corresponds to a point. Namely, there's some element little x, and the ultra filter is the set of all sets that contain little x. So if you go back to this hierarchy I mentioned, for finite sets, uh, Boolean algebra maps are exactly the same as points. So for finite sets, um, ultra filters don't provide any kind of useful generalization uh, for points. But for infinite sets, the situation is different. And um, to see that, it's, it's good to note uh, the ultra filter lemma, which says that every proper filter is contained in uh, an ultra filter. And you prove this by saying ultra filters as kind of maximal filters, and then use Zorn's lemma. And a corollary of this is that every infinite set has a non uh, principal ultra filter. And the way you see, uh, the way you prove this corollary from the ultra filter lemma is to begin with the filter consisting of cofinite sets. So this is all the subsets of X whose complement is finite. This is a perfectly good proper filter, um, and it is contained in an ultra filter by the ultra filter lemma, but that ultra filter um, can't have any finite sets in it because if it had a finite set, it would also have the complement of that finite set and then therefore have to have the intersection of those two, which would contain the empty set, which isn't allowed. Now, um, by a cardinality argument, which I won't go into here, uh, you can see that there are actually many, many ultra filters, non-principal ultra filters on an infinite set X. And the, the cardinality of them is, is much greater than the cardinality of subsets of X. Um, however, uh, the, the proof that they exist is non-constructive. And so even imagining one non-principal ultra filter on an infinite set is as hard as imagining a well ordering on, on the real numbers. Okay, so with this introduction um, to filters and ultra filters, uh, I hope you'll have you'll be comfortable with what they are and will be ready to, to think about other topics in topology, such as filters and convergence, proofs of Tikhonov's theorem, or uh, the stone check compactification.